Hello there, my name is Michael Maynard and welcome back to Gorilla Picking. Now, we've got a really interesting one today guys. Uh, we are not going to manipulate a lock open. What we are going to do though is get one mounted up and make it into a cutaway in fact. Now, um, I need a cutaway lock so that I can do some uh, filming and some demonstrating. So um, I didn't want to sacrifice one of my good locks for this. So what I've decided I'm going to do is use a cheap Chinese lock instead. Now, this lock's really interesting. It is, um, it's made to look like a Lagarde lock, okay? Um, Lagarde are a long-standing safe lock company. They're owned by Dorma Carba now, and uh, they make some lovely stuff. They're American through and through. Well, this one is a thing called a Lexam, L-E-X-A-M. I'm sure you can see that on the label there. And uh, like a lot of things made in China, unfortunately, it's built to deceive. So um, it is built to look like a, uh, a Lagarde lock, but in fact it's not. It was quite a bit cheaper to buy. So what I'm going to do is use this one. Now, um, I'll talk to you about the stand in a minute, all right? We'll have a talk about that in a second. What I want to do first is tell you about making um, the cutaway portion of this. Now, with a safe lock, all the activity, all the interesting stuff happens up about here. Now, in order to film that, you, you really can't look in from the back of the lock, okay, because you don't get a very good view of what's going on. What you really need to be able to do is see through this part here. So what I am going to do is, uh, hopefully anyway, this is the plan, use a Dremel. So use the cutoff wheel on a Dremel to cut out this section of lock. So the body here, maybe, I don't know, 20 by 20 mils, something like that, um, will be cut out of there so that I can then get a camera looking down on the fence and uh, on the gates going underneath it. Now, um, there's one or two other things I'm going to do to make this work as well. I've decided that I'm going to leave the back off of it most of the time. Um, and that means I'm going to need to disable this uh, relocking device here. Now, the relocker on this is really quite crude. It's just a piece of spring steel. So what I'm actually going to do is remove that altogether. We're just going to take that out um, so that we can have the lock fully operational, but with the back off. Because as I'm sure you guys will remember, um, this little part on the back of the lock holds that little spring down. And, uh, and stops the lock from functioning if the lock has been removed, so uh, if the back has been removed. So we're going we're gonna to disable that. Now, um, the other thing I'd very much like to do actually is pull this completely apart um, so that I can do all the cutting and then re clean it up and reassemble it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the correct tool, so I'd really like to take this wheel pack off, but I'm not going to be able to do that. So what I am going to do is take off the, uh, the, the lever here and the bolt um, because we've got to do that anyway to, to get this uh, relocker device out. And then I'm going to absolutely jam pack the back of this lock with rag um, and then put the back back on again and then see if I can do all the cutting on the outside here with the Dremel without getting too much rubbish and swarf into the lock. Because, of course, if, if we've got too much junk in here, the, the lock's just going to die on us. Um, and that is one of the reasons why I wanted to use a, uh, a cheap lock rather than one of my good ones. Um, the other thing about this lock is that uh, it is absolutely brand new. I've never had it mounted up before. And I have got absolutely no idea what the number on this is. Now, I bought it from uh, an eBay seller in the States and had it shipped to my colleague Andy in, uh, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And he very kindly forwarded it on to me, but not before he actually sealed up the bit of paper um, that has got the combination on here. Now, I know that I could cheat and, and just look at the wheels and work it out from there once I've got everything mounted up. Um, but I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do here is get this thing made into a cutaway, mount it up, and then see if I can manipulate it and uh, see if my numbers match the uh, match the numbers that Andy's got sealed up. So that's what we're going to do with the lock. Now, um, the... Uh, the board that I'm going to mount it to is actually going to be a pretty cheap and simple device. 
Now the proper uh, manipulation practice mounts and, and display mounts that you can get for locks are very cool but also fairly expensive and um, I, I don't really need it that flash because all I'm going to do is be filming this thing so I'm going to be filming it from the front and from the back so I don't really care what the stand looks like and uh, what I did, I went to Mitre 10, so Mitre 10, this crowd here, are uh, sort of the equivalent of Bunnings in, in Australia or Ace Hardware in, uh, in the US, they're a big um, do-it-yourself store, and they were selling these little kits for children to make bookends, and I think this is a fascinating idea, I think this is awesome, so um, they, they're pre-drilled with a few holes, they come complete with a whole bunch of nails, so you, you know, your kid can bang the thing together. And um, in essence, what you do is you make a bookend that looks like that. Um, you get two of these to a, to a packet, obviously. And uh, your kid hammers this together and then slaps a bit of paint on it and hey presto, they've got a bookend. Well, um, it occurred to me, and this is only like five or ten bucks, you know, it's dirt cheap. So it occurred to me that in actual fact, if I didn't use this piece here, that reinforcing strut, um, and instead mount the lock on there, I think I'll actually have a pretty reasonable sort of a manipulation stand here. So it, it won't look that flash, and frankly I don't give a damn, like I said, it's, it's really got a job to do, it's not there to be pretty. Um, so what I'm going to do now, um, I am going to go down to work, because I've, my, my tools are down at work, and uh, we are going to hack into this thing and see if we can turn it into a cutaway and we are going to bang a few screws through this thing and drill a couple of holes and see if we can get the lock mounted up. Now I haven't done a practice run on this guys so uh, I, I'm learning as we go alright. Uh, the finished product may look a little bit different to what I've just described because I really don't know if it's going to work. So stick with me and we'll see how we go.
Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, it was a hell of an interesting experience. I have never mounted up one of these things before. I have never made one into a cutaway before, and I have never stripped the wheel pack off one either. So um, that was actually the major thing for me. I was astounded at how hot the case got while I was trying to cut through it. And I was worried about um, wrecking the plastic components in those wheels. So what I had to do was figure out a way to get that spring washer off. Um, and in the end, I just used a screwdriver to, to kind of unwind it. That let me strip the wheel pack out. Um, I then did what I had to do, let the, the body cool down, um, clean the case, and then put everything back together. And, and, you know, assembly was the reverse of removal, basically. So uh, the other thing that I might change in the final version... Um, I'm, I'm real happy with it as it is, okay, but I'm not convinced that I've got enough room to look in here and get a decent look while I'm filming. So I may possibly end up cutting this area off as well, so we've got a bigger area for the camera to look down into. So um, might do that, might not, but um, if I do, now that I've done the rest of the process, it's literally going to be a half hour job because I know exactly how to do it. Um, the only other thing I've got to do is see what this is like to manipulate. So um, true to my word, I have not had a look in and uh, see where these gates line up to. So what I'm going to do for hopefully the next video is uh, put some tape over the top of that so I can't see what I'm doing, manipulate the thing and see what numbers I come up with. So there we go, guys. Um, thanks for watching this. Thanks for coming along with me on the journey. It was it was a very different video from my point of view. I've never done one quite this, like this before. So I'd value your comments. Um, please leave your comments below. Please subscribe. Do all those usual things. Thanks for watching. My name's Michael Maynard. This is Gorilla Picking, and that is a Lexam Safe Lock. Thanks, guys. <laughs>